Call her 10 now, and I'll throw you a couple of tickets. Two for In Flames. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. I met Alan. Did you? I gave him marijuana. Oh, great. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Three five one nine two. Want to send a text if you want to watch? Uh, God knows why, but you can at alancockshow.com. Thank you so much to Huckley McDorpley for helping out today in the video department. The Guardians uh, play this afternoon, about ten minutes in, as we speak. They're going to wrap up the regular season and the series against the Royals. It's one nothing in the bottom of the first. So a quick scoring game so far. And then Friday we get into. Uh, the postseason, their first game, first of three against the Tampa Rays. That is a 12.07 start here on WMMS on Friday. So 7 after noon, and then we will be live after the game. And then they'll play Saturday and, if need be, Sunday. Be nice if they didn't have to play on Sunday. That's what I'm saying. And I had somebody whisper the same thing to me, someone that's not supposed to talk, but they talk to me because they trust me. They know that you'll keep their secret. Mm-hmm. So, um, Guardians will play as we speak. Tonight on MMS, you'll get Cavs preseason ball. Uh, the Cavs in Philadelphia against Let uh, know. the <laughs> 76ers. Who's that? Joel Embiid? Who's on the Sixers now? Joel Embiid, James Harden. Oh, Harden's in the Sixers yeah, now. Yeah, they right. traded uh, him from Brooklyn. Right. Tobias Harris. Oh. Right, so we've got let them know. I think the Sixers still use trust the process. Like, are they just circulating the same dumb slogans of it? Trust the process. Boy, that'll get people riled up. Trust the process. Okay. What happened to like, you know, hey, rip their b-holes out. How about that? When, when I, was that one? There wasn't. Which team? I want one team rip their b-holes out. How about that? What's a team that has a B in the name? Uh, the 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 Boston Boston, Boston. basketballers. <laughs> <laughs> the Boston uh, basketballers, the Celtics, Milwaukee Bucks, Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, they could they wouldn't say rip their B holes out because that's their team, but you know, we're gonna Milwaukee all over you. We're Nuck, here to they get, should go with Nuck if you buck. Nuck if you buck. <laughs> We're here to distract you from the Jeffrey Dahmer Netflix special. We're mother buckers. There you go. Do we Snoop, need to scare you, Mary? <laughs> Mary's hiccuping. She started. Do you? Do you how, what's your? Uh, I have water. What I is normally, your hiccup removal process? Because everybody has a different one. It's drinking out of a cup backwards. So mm. how you would put your mm-hmm. lip on the front of it and tilt yeah. it forward. Forward. We'll go yep. get a cup. This has been happening. Mine for is like to hold my minutes. breath as I guzzle water. <laughs> yeah. I've, <laughs> I've been holding my breath in the breaks. All right. I'll I like it. the scare. The scare is what works. It doesn't me. help me. I need a. I'll get a cup. Well, nothing scares you. Ladies anymore. and gentlemen, yeah. we are experiencing yeah, right. technical mm-hmm. difficulties. Please stand by. People keep suggesting horror movies for me to suggest to Mary. I'm O for however many with her. So. You know what? I'm going to put this out there to people because nobody likes this movie except for me. But they put Land of the Lost on Netflix. And that movie. The Will Ferrell movie. Will Ferrell and uh, Danny McBride. And it's so stupid. It's a stupid movie. I understand it's not a good movie, but it makes me giggle because there's so many little lines in it that are just so funny to me. And I was watching a little bit of it last night with my girlfriend. And she's watching me cackle. And she's like, I don't know if I like. And we usually align pretty good on comedies, but this one I don't think uh, it was hitting her the way that it hits me. I was a huge Land of the Lost fan when I was a kid. The TV show with the Slee Stacks and mm-hmm. Sid and Marty Croft did it. It wasn't a great television show and it wasn't a great movie, but the movie, to your point, is so dumb. It's so and it's dumb. like, I don't know what people wanted it to be. I saw it the summer before we moved to Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't even know if it was a flop. Oh, it was a flop. Oh, it was a huge flop. Oh, it cost a ton of money, and it made, yeah. like, it made like half its budget. Yeah, so. yeah, it was a huge flop. Nobody liked it. But I, there's 
lines in that movie that I quote to this day, and it just makes me giggle. And I haven't watched it in a long time, so we watch the Alan Cox show. show. On what? Why, why is that doing that? I don't do it. That's weird. Peter has hiccups too. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So if anybody watches that and actually likes it, if you hate it, I don't care. Like, you, keep that to yourself. Yeah. That's most people's opinion. Of you it, just want people co signing on Land of the I just want other lost. people, the same way I like when people enjoy I Think You Should Leave and we can kind of have those inside jokes together. I like that with Land of the Lost because I think it's a, a similar kind of stupid humor that just is really absurd and makes me happy. Hmm. There is a movie I suggested to Mary, and I would like to retract it because I, upon further consideration, I forgot how bad it actually is. But. The, the horror movies I was suggesting to her. I did text you Autopsy of Jane Doe, mm-hmm. which is a suspenseful, suspenseful movie. Sure. But I also recommended a movie, too, called The Cleansing Hour, which sure. is a, I forgot after I recommended it to you, that it is not good. <laughs> but so, I thought that was the but it's way you're exor- going now. It's is, an exorcism. No, well. I thought, I thought you wanted to give her the movies that you didn't like to see if she likes them. Because she doesn't like anything that you've suggested. Right. But that one, I don't want to waste your time. It's going to be her favorite. I don't want, well, okay. Okay. Are you hiccup free yet? I think so. I'm telling you, drinking out of the cup backwards, sometimes I can hold my breath and it'll go away, but drinking out of the cup backwards gets it every time. The cup backwards? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about, right? No, I do. I watched you do it. Have you seen that before? (laughs) What? (laughs) I look like a turtle? Yeah, I'm Mm -hmm. not going to be able to unsee that. Nor is anybody walking by right now. Hey, yeah, she's drinking backwards from a cup. I can't believe you're not putting this on your subscription. It's our backwards from a cup challenge. I think it's because it just takes your brain off of it. Hmm. I don't know what Because you're concentrating so hard on not spilling and not getting it on your chin. That's really what it is. Alan, hate the show. (laughs) There seems to be some info that's coming to light right now. The vast majority of people that got into a car accident today have taken the COVID vaccine. It's happening. (laughs) He's on to something, right? Just like that Tony guy said, all these people are dying years after they got the COVID vaccine. That can't possibly be coincidence. That Coolio, (laughs) who was a severe asthmatic and had heart problems, died at 59. And possibly drug problems. And then also... Possibly. DMX, who... Had all kinds of problems. All sorts of problems. Yeah. But it's the vaccine. Well, I hope uh, I hope they're wrong. I hope that that's not what did. And by the way, how do we know Coolio got the COVID vaccine? Yeah, has he publicly been like pro? You know, he might have been. Get out of our. Somebody suggested for Milwaukee. Get out of our bucking way. <laughs> I like that. That's a good way too. Mm. Tell Mary that horseradish or mustard helps. I hate. Horseradish. I know how you like both. I hate horseradish. The one thing hiccup remedies have in common, Alan, is the holding of the breath. You deprive oxygen to the diaphragm, which stops the spasms. Everything else is hokum. hokum. And, fl- and or flimflam, I'd probably say. <laughs> anyway, Snoop Dogg, I mentioned before, is dropping a uh, line of uh, THC-infused Funyuns. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, when you're high, what you want most is onion flavor. I love Funyuns, dude. Ugh. But I don't know if Funyuns I... Funyuns, to me, are the snack. I can't figure out who started it and why it's around. Hey, guys, uh, we've exhausted every other possible permutation of snack. What about onion-flavored chips? Dude, they're, they're so good. good. I'm, I, I like a Funyun. I don't know if I want... Because that's a snack that you want to eat more than one. I don't know if I want them to be infused with THC. Because no. I'll eat a whole bag and be like... Oh. i am been high for four days. Guess who's going to be high forever now? Yeah, his are called snazzle O's. They come in onion and spicy onion. Mm. I got back lately, and I don't remember how I did it. Oh, I, yeah, I do remember. I got back on the bugles train. You put them on your fingers and act like a witch? I don't do that, oh. but we went to uh, Mike Beater's uh, son's birthday party a few weeks ago. And it was dinosaur themed. And so there were all these different kinds of foods. And of course, a giant bowl of bugles were dinosaur claws uh, and or teeth. How many dinosaurs can that kid even name? 
Well, he's very small. I don't know that he's. My three year old niece can name almost all of them. Like, you point at it and she I'm can name it. I'm not talking about her. I know saying, she knows her dinosaurs. I'm talking about Beater's dumb kid. But he might not be too young, <laughs> is what I was trying to say. Yeah, I think he's four or something. I don't know. I don't think he's that young, is he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Or no. I thought. His daughter's a little older, but the son, I think, might God, be. Is this son four already? Yeah, I think so. God. Anyway, uh, but I hadn't awesome. had a bugle in a minute. And the trouble is, when you go to the store, they only s- sell you bugles in like a pillowcase size bag. And you're upset about this. No, I bought it. Yeah. But, but. What, did you want a small bag of bugles? Well, yes. No. Because now I got to tear through this whole bag. Yeah. I'm not going to be the only one eating them, obviously. But it's like, I'm not th- I'm not that guy. So, um, but boy, they're good. And I don't know why. Because they taste like, they're like buttery. Yeah, that's I, the whole point. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, you do. I, I do. Okay. I know. Yeah. you do. Yeah. See, I'm learning things you about you myself. You don't know what you like. I know. That's what I, I think every day you should learn something new about yourself. And that's what I've, uh, I've come back around to, learning that about my, granted, it's a really dumb fact. But uh, nevertheless... Something to learn. Son of a bitch. That's right. Thank you, sir. Are you a pansy, Alan? No, but I do like a bugle. Um, you know, we are talking before about how Pound Cakes, uh, years ago, he did uh, an advertisement for a sandwich shop called Mr. Zubbs. Lunchtime, lunchtime at Mr. Zubbs. Famously. I'm sure it got him some free sandwiches. And uh, they showed up on the list of Akron restaurants with an inordinate number of uh, health code violations. And I was reading about, I never worked fast food. I worked fine dining when I was waiting tables and doing all that stuff. I never worked fast food. I had plenty of friends that did. And part of the reason I steered away from it was because all they talked about is how awful these jobs are. But my understanding was always that kind of your entree position once you got one of those jobs was fries right maybe you were a little touched in the head they were like put timmy on fries is that easy to do or something well i assume because it's pretty dangerous to me i don't know if i would want to be on well fries. you're just dipping stuff into <laughs> hot oil how could that be dangerous yeah, cody I don't, I don't know but my but it always seemed like that was shorthand for the entry level responsibility in fast food and they're trying to take that away Companies uh, at every level will not be happy until they've been able to replace people with robots. And I was reading a thing about how robots are making French fries now faster and better than people. Because obviously you can program these things to do precisely. There's no margin of error. There might be a margarine of error. There's no... (laughs) There's no uh, French fry robot that's checking their Instagram when they should be pulling the fries. Up. That's right. That are alive, you are coming with me. Nothing like that. Robots are making fries. So if you, if a robot is going to do the entry level job at a fast food place, because pretty soon they're gonna they're already trying it out. Mm-hmm. Not just the robots; they're trying out burger flipping robots and artificial intelligence takes your order at the thing and you pull up and a human's got to hand you some food but even that's going to go away you know there are people who like to deride fast food jobs as like well there's those are teenager jobs you shouldn't be a grown person those are jobs until you get there's a lot of grown people working these jobs because they're plentiful and these are the new assembly jobs. Yeah, there's a lot of old people working because their Social Security ran out or yes. something. Yes. They've got a cradle-to-the-grave program over at McDonald's. <laughs> Hello, Earth Boy. It's me, Short Circuit. Just go away. Beep, bop, boop. Beep, bop, boop. And so all these business articles, you know, they write them up in business uh, websites as like this amazing development. I, uh, Fast food's going high tech, and isn't this great? And the Flippy Two robot, and the you know, they're deep frying fries, and so yeah, there's no margin for human error. But they're but they're also, gonna they're gonna they won't be happy until they've done away with live people in these places. Right, but they're still gonna need somebody that fixes these machines when they break down because they still can't keep 
the milkshake machine running, uh, the soft serve machine going at McDonald's, how do they think that they're going to keep the French fry machine running? I it's, don't buy it. Yeah, I, I guess if I they can, I mean. I think we're years away. So those will be the jobs, though. Mm-hmm. Is Those are the yeah. human jobs is fixing the robots. That's all right. Let's fix the robots. That's been documented in, you know, uh, science fiction for a long time. All that was left for the people was to fix the robot overlords. So on the one hand, you so might you be the somebody that fixes the robots, and that's when that's when we're in trouble. <laughs> the robot that I fixes the robot. Robots. Robot, 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 robot. You might be somebody working the fries as I speak. Just know, whatever company you're working for, I'm developing a robot that pulls itself up by its own bootstraps. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's right. It's the Boomer 5000. Yeah. Yep. Once once that thing's developed, uh, there's no stopping the robots. <laughs> Used to be you had to pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Now a robot can do it. I wonder where that saying came from. Because, first of all, what's a bootstrap? I think it's the thing in the back that you put your finger into but, like, and what pull. are you pulling yourself up? And, like, you fall in mud and... I don't. I don't get the. Pull I think it's about up. putting your shoes on. Like pull your boots up and get to work. I don't know what that's. I don't know what it's about. I don't wear boots. You wear some boots. I have one pair of Tims, mm-hmm. and they don't have a. They don't have that little hook. I'll. I'll read you this. Yes, please. Often used to refer to pulling oneself over a fence. Okay. Early nineteenth century, mid eighteen hundreds, implying that somebody is attempting a far-fetched or impossible task. So it sounds like it started off as something kind of mocking someone. So this whole saying that is pull yourself by, pull yourself up by the bootstraps or your bootstraps is uh, do something impossible. That actually makes a ton of sense. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Why can't you do this? That's yeah. Why can't you do the impossible? Just do the impossible. Recover. Well, it also says recover from a setback without any outside help. That's what it means now. Yes, to succeed only by one's own efforts. So in the idiomatic expression, that's what it would mean. But if it started with like, this, look at this guy trying to get himself over the fence. By his bootstraps. With his bootstraps. So, um, yeah. I don't know. But every time you read one of these... um, you know, and of course, in this business, I have long tried to fool myself in thinking that there's no way I could possibly be replaced by a robot. But then every day I'll read some article about like, um, hey, artificial intelligence voiceover people. Are you tired? You know, I do voiceover stuff from time to time, independent of the show here. And you'll see a lot more advertisements for tired of paying voiceover people to do job professionally. We've got a huge AI thing of just words that people will never know. So someday, you know, voiceover is one thing. But when they start getting when they have the voices interacting with each other, making jokes, making good jokes, bad jokes, whatever it is that we do. That's when we have to yeah, be the, yeah. They don't need robots to do what we do. Well, they can't. They you could easily they do that. They haven't figured out how to make a, a robot so wildly inconsistent. Ding, fries are done. Right, thank you. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. So someday you might turn on WMMS and hear the the Fat Face Five Thousand back here. It's tiny pound stringing cake words. To, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's tiny pound cake. <laughs> oh, guys, be nice. <laughs> I'm not fat. All right. Anyway, I've got a break. Uh, three five one nine two. Want to send a text? Uh, you can listen on that iHeartRadio app there, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show on one hundred point seven WMMA.